Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are going to be party prepping for a surprise party for my aunt who is turning 70. Now in a previous couple videos, I actually prepared her cake and I couldn't really say what it was for because I didn't want to ruin the surprise and she does watch this channel. But as I mentioned in previous videos, you guys watched me bake the cake layers and decorate this cake and I kind of was working on it as I was getting ready for Aubrey's birthday. I was making cakes and just figured, hey, why not bake you know, the layers now and I'll freeze them and decorate them later. So this cake was prepared way in advance and it ended up really working out and saving me time closer to the party. But I figured we would start with some of the sweet treats that I party prepped for this party specifically. To start, we are going to be making this basic chocolate chip cookie and then giving it a little added touch to make it fit the theme. Now, I absolutely love this recipe. I actually have a specific video just for this cookie recipe. So if you're interested in knowing all of the measurements and the temperature for the oven and all of that stuff, you can go ahead and check out that recipe video. I will go ahead and link it up above. But as I was making these, I figured I would go ahead and make some just regular giant cookies. The normal size that I make is actually using like an ice cream scoop. And then for the party, I will be also making some like regular cookie scooped size cookies. So this recipe can make about 30 of these giant cookies and that is about the number of people we were going to have at the party. But after I made like a couple trays of these giant cookies, I realized like some people may want to have more than one cookie, some people may not want to have the full cookie. And so what I ended up doing was actually packaging these up just to have as my normal stash. I like to give my mom one when she comes and helps me like, you know, watch the kids once a week and visits us so that she can have something sweet to snack on on her drive home. And then I figured that with the remaining cookie dough, I could just make these small, you know, normal cookie sized cookies. And then we will be decorating them to fit the theme. So 
So I let these cookies cool after coming out of the oven and I think I even stuck them in the freezer for a day or two. And then I decided to decorate them one evening when I was kid free. And what I did was I melted down some of this like vanilla almond bark and dipped half the cookie into it. And then I used some sprinkles to top off like the first group of cookies. And then for the remaining like half of the cookies, we're still gonna be dipping them in the white almond bark, but then I'm gonna be using the last little bit of almond bark, coloring that, and then I'm gonna be piping on like little 70s all over these cookies. The next sweet treat we are preparing for this party is going to be some meringue cookies. This just uses egg whites, sugar, and some flavoring. In my case, I'm doing vanilla. And then I'm also going to be using two different types of blue food coloring to give these cookies just like a nice pop of color that fits the theme. So I've mentioned this theme but haven't really said what it was. My mom was kind of like co-hosting this party. She was getting a lot of the materials. So she purchased a little pack from Amazon that was like a 1954, like 70th birthday party pack. And you could choose what colors you wanted. And my aunt's favorite color is blue. So we went with like a blue silver theme. So that is why I'm doing some little blue decorations on my sweet treats. But to make these meringue cookies, you just combine some egg whites and sugar and then heat them over some boiling water in, in like a double boiler until they reach a specific temperature. You want it to be like 50 degrees Celsius, which is like, I think 222 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't remember the exact number in Fahrenheit, so I always just make sure to switch my little thermometer to Celsius because it's a nicer number to remember. Then we are going to whip up this mixture until we get like soft or firm peaks. I'm sure that there's like an exact consistency that's ideal, but I just kind of go for like a, a nice, pretty stiff peak. Then you're gonna add in your flavoring. So I added in my vanilla and let that like totally mix in and incorporate well. Next, what I'm doing is I'm taking some saran wrap and just spreading out my food coloring in two different little lines, you know, along the saran wrap. And then we're gonna be putting our meringue mixture on top of this and rolling it up to insert into my piping bag. I ended up getting about two of these like prepared meringue cylinders, let's say, for my piping bag. And it made a whole bunch of cookies just using like six eggs.
So I forgot to mention how I get the exact measurements for these things. I measured out the egg whites in grams and took that number and multiplied it by 1.25 to get how much sugar I needed to add to my egg whites. If you guys want like a more like detailed walkthrough of how to make meringue cookies, I could totally do a video on that and maybe we can try to make some cute little designs as well. So let me know down below in the comments if that is something you guys would appreciate so that I can get working on that. But anyways, I really love how these guys like piped out. They looked really beautiful. And then with the last little bit, I figured I'd pipe out like a big 70. And then I stuck them in my oven, which had preheated to just 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna leave these in there for like two, two and a half hours. And after the baking has actually like finished, what we're gonna do is we're actually just going to turn off the oven, but leave the cookies in the oven so that they cool down with the oven so that it's not like you take them out and expose them to room temperature right away. Supposedly that helps make sure that they don't crack. But as you guys can see, I'm taking these out of the oven. They look just as beautiful as they did before they even went in. So there was no like color fading. And I have to say at the end of the party, there were none of these left. These were a hit amongst the guests and I could definitely see doing something like this for a future party. It is pretty simple. And in my opinion, doesn't take too much time or too much skill to do. Okay, we are going to move on to like actually getting ready for the party, get closer to, you know, the day of the party. The first thing I'm going to do, what I normally do for most of my parties, is decorate my glass board. So I thought I would just kind of keep it simple and just write happy 70th birthday. And I'm doing it like in the lower center of my glass board because I will be doing a balloon arch and it tends to cut off the like top fourth of my glass board. So it looks a little funky now but it will look better once everything is set up then we are going to undress my dining room table take away the halloween decorations and get this table set up against the wall and we will be decorating it in a bit but i try to do that closer to the actual day of the party because i don't want my kids to mess it up So on this evening, I thought I would get the little birthday banner that came in the pack that my mom purchased, get that set up. And one of the banners I figured I would go ahead and hang where I have my happy Halloween banner. Now you've seen I've, I've taken down some Halloween decorations, but I did leave up a bunch for the party and you know some of the kids really loved seeing them. So I don't feel bad about leaving some of my Halloween decorations up, but there are you know little touches where I wanted the birthday party theme to be the highlight. What I'm doing right here is I'm actually taping pennies to the bottom of the backs of the seven and the zero in this banner so that it won't spin around and flip upside down. So if you ever have that situation where you need you know, something to be totally upright, a penny works great. The other banner I decided to hang on my glass board and I thought it you know, gave it a nice little touch and you'll see in the final look with the balloons too, this really worked well. Next up, we are going to clean my sliding glass door and then give it a little bit of a special birthday touch using some chalk pens. 
The funny thing is, is I drew this little like triangular banner on my glass board without really counting how many triangles I was making. And then I realized at the end, I counted all of them and it was like, this is perfect for writing happy 70th birthday. So that is what I did. I didn't just leave them blank. It worked out perfect. Then I just filled in some of the negative space with some, you know, confetti as far down as Jack cannot reach because he would just wipe them away if I drew them all the way down the sliding glass door. Next, we're gonna prepare our little igloo thingy. We use this typically outside at a lot of our parties, but I thought I would try something new and have the drinks in the house. But I guess we didn't give it a really good clean at the end of our last party, so I wanted to give it a little wipe down and then we're putting some of our drinks in here. So it's closer to the party now. We're gonna go ahead and put on a nice blue table cover and get our balloon arch frame set up. I have really found that doing it this way is easier for me and quicker to set up the balloon arch than blowing up all the balloons, getting them on the rings, feeding the pole through the holes, and then setting up the arch. It's easier if you set up the arch with the rings already like on it and then just attach the balloons as you go. This obviously is if you have one of these kits. If you don't, there might be another easier way with the supplies that you have. But I really like how this table and like wall decorations are all coming together. And this table is where we will be keeping our games and prizes as well as all of our treats for the party. So the package my mom got came with a bunch of different games that were all 1954 themed because that was the year my aunt was born. So it was like the Price is Right game, like music trivia, movie trivia, things like that. But the weird thing about this kit was that it came with table settings for, you know, up to 30 people, but each game only had like 15 cards. So during the party, even though we were expecting 30 people, we had to limit like how many games each person could choose to play. So everyone got to pick like two different gaming cards out of the four possible ones. So we're moving on to an unglamorous room in the house, just kind of tidying up the bathroom and giving it a nice clean before our guests come. I do have a lot of Halloween decorations in here and I wanted to just keep those up so I figured I'd let my mirror art kind of go off of that theme and I decided to write happy 70th booth day. <laughs> I did this for her two years ago in a previous video and that was kind of like Halloween was the birthday theme. So if you want to check out that video I will also link that above.
They did have some extra balloons from the package, but these ones had 70s on them. So what I thought I would do was use my little technique of attaching them to the ceiling using a little sticky dot and some painter's tape. You put the sticky dot on the very top of the balloon and then the painter's tape stuck to the sticky dot with the sticky side of the painter's tape up so that that painter's tape will actually be sticking to the ceiling. And then you tie a little ribbon on your balloon and it really looks like the balloon has helium in it and like it's floating in the air, but really it is just taped to the ceiling. The difficult thing about doing this in the bathroom was that because the paint in the bathroom has more gloss, some of the balloons did not stick to the ceiling for as long as I had hoped. But in the end, we still got that celebratory feel in the bathroom. The last thing I'm doing the night before the party is putting these little sticky things and sticks on the back of these themed birthday decorations for different types of food the following day. Okay, so it's the day of the party, and I'm starting off by preparing my guacamole. To make my guacamole, I just use avocados, some tomatoes, some onion, garlic powder, onion powder, seasoning salt, and some sour cream. And I mix those together to taste. I know that that is really annoying if you're like a baker like me and you like exact recipes. And to be honest, it's bothered me that I don't have an exact recipe for my guacamole. So what I was doing was I was keeping track as I prepared everything, like how many grams of avocados am I using? How much tomatoes am I putting in? What's, you know, how many teaspoons of garlic powder am I adding in for this ratio? And hopefully, you know, if I need to have the recipe written down, I can have those proportions, you know, written out. But I think in the future, I'll still just do it to taste and I you know, like it a certain way. So I think for the most part, it will be consistent. We will be using this guacamole in our seven layer dip. This is the first time I actually ever made a seven layer bean dip. And I really feel like you can't really go wrong with it at just using canned refried beans, my homemade guacamole, but you could always, you know, purchase your own. I'm mixing some taco seasoning with some sour cream to give it some extra, you know, taco flavor putting down some salsa, adding cheese, and then we're gonna be topping it off with olives, tomatoes, and onions. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being like to. You made this mess and left me with the pieces. So these first, you know, two food items that I prepared don't really fit the theme of the party, but we were going to have Mexican food for dinner. So that's why, you know, there's not really a theme there. But for, you know, the little cheese platter, I thought it would be fun to write out 70 using the cheese and then fill in the negative space with some salami and then some different crackers. Looking back, I think the salami should have been in the shape of the 70 because it would have stood out a little bit more, but it was consumed rather quickly. So it was just kind of for like the start of the party for the aesthetic like look to be enjoyed, but everyone just loved eating these little snacks as we waited for my aunt to arrive. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on outside. My aunt lent me some of these stretchy table covers, which I really loved. I think I'm probably gonna get some for myself to have on hand. And this is my other aunt, by the way, the sister of the birthday girl. She also lent me a little sparkly chair cover as like the seat of honor.
Okay, we're going back inside and just doing some last minute touches around the kitchen. We're starting off by making some pink lemonade. This was a big hit amongst the kids at Aubrey's sixth birthday party. So I figured I would go ahead and whip up some for this party. I kind of wish I had gotten like blue raspberry lemonade or something like that to fit the theme, but overall it really didn't matter. Then we're just gonna be adding some final touches to the party decoration and we are done. One other thing that I did prepare that I like to do for all my parties is to, you know, come up with our own game. And so I made a little questionnaire about my aunt using some questions that are like, you know, everyone should probably have a good idea of what the answer is. And then I got some like really weird ones brainstormed, like how many hours of sleep did she get last night? Or what color did she choose for her manicure on that day? Because that was how we were gonna get her to come over. She was gonna get her nails done with her sister, my other aunt, and then they were gonna drop by my house to give Aubrey um, like a belated birthday gift. So it ended up working out. She was surprised. But the, the questionnaire was kind of fun because I just kind of came up with not your average birthday questions. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little party prep video. Stay tuned for a party cleanup video. If you guys are new to my channel and really enjoy party preps, I have a whole playlist of them. I like to go all out, so make sure you go ahead and check that out. Don't forget to subscribe again if you are new, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.